Stand for the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Here. Alderman Shaw. Here. Alderman Ellis. Here. Alderman Schmidt. Here. Alderman Zwart. Here. Alderman Stray. Here. Alderman Kavieski. Here. Alderman Miller. Here. There's approval of minutes from March 6, 2018. We need a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. To approve Second. the minutes. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes have passed. Uh, comments and suggestions from citizens. If anybody has anything they want to say, please fill out a blue card or just come up to the podium. And uh, you don't need to fill out a card. Just give us your name and address. Oh, you got one already. <laughs> <laughs> ben Fullerton. You're the only one tonight so far. Okay. Take it easy. Um, real quickly, uh, to be honest with you, I just saw this today. Um, when I was looking up the minutes, so I thought I'd uh, put a couple notes together. But Ben Fullerton, 503 Oak Street. Um, and I wanted to address item seven tonight on committee reports, uh, public services, uh, store, strong sewer deal. So, you know, I've kind of talked to you before about it. So I live right on the corner of um, Oak and Elizabeth Street. And even in uh, Mr. Fry's uh, memorandum, he even, he even um, mentions that intersection flooding. So first of all, uh, I think that's a great idea. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you pass it. And, um, and I can't believe this, I think we should do more. So, so this is the deal. So that intersection, so I've lived there since mm, 89. So what's that, 29 years. So that intersection, you know, we've talked about it, it floods. You get two inches of rain and boom, it's there. So we know about it. So, um, and then just, you know, just the whole, the, the, the school apartments and Azura, and that's a whole nother deal. So all that water comes down and I think we've addressed it, but so what I, but what I saw and what I'm proposing, or maybe even look into it, cause it doesn't even seem like it could be true, but, um, and I understand, you know, lateraling it all off, but I, it, it even says in the, in the notes here, how um, to, uh, to um, put new laterals down 4th Street and that's fine. But I think we ought to address the area by my house. I got a little bit of skin in the game. And so, you know what I'm saying? And, it, and it, this memorandum even shows the uh, laterals. And it's funny, see that road was redone in 98. And I can't believe it, it, they didn't put a lateral in there, but it's hard to explain up here with my hands and everything. But it, it comes down and it comes down the schools and then the lateral goes up and around through George and then Jefferson and down Elizabeth. And then it shoots down towards the, towards the west. It just doesn't make any sense. So to wrap it up, you know, could we just look at maybe opening up those uh, pipes, pumps, or rerouting or something like that? Okay. I'm sure we'll. And maybe I've got the card a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I guess we'd have to have the DPW look at yeah. it and see what they and have to say. I'd be willing to, you know, help them with sure. that. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Any other comments? We're Karen and Joe Gussie. We're here for 8D&E, and I just wanted to thank you all for listening um, last time and tabling the discussion and for providing clarification on the ordinances for number 26. We really appreciate that. Sure. And we look forward to continuing to work to get this job done. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, we will move on. Uh, consent agenda, the first, there, there are several items on the consent agenda, <coughs> licenses. There's an electric utility easement agreement between the City of Oconomowoc and PBJC Oconomowoc LLC, which is Mills Fleet Farm, and a resolution proclaiming April 27th, 2018 as International Migratory Bird Day. Do we need a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion made. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, call the roll, please. Alderman Rosick. Aye. Alderman Shaw. Aye. Alderman Ellis. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Alderman Zwart. Aye. Alderman Stray. Aye. Alderman Kavieski? Aye. Alderman Miller? Aye. The committee reports public services. Uh, first item is consider acting resolution declaring authorized representative to request grant funding from Wisconsin DNR Urban Point Source and Stormwater Management Grant Program for Forest Street. 
Thank you, Mayor. The item before you tonight is part of the DNR grant application process. Uh, they have councils uh, approve resolutions indicating that uh, should the grant dollars be awarded to the city for the project that we're requesting that the city would carry through and, and complete the project. Uh, the project that uh, we're talking about tonight uh, for the grant is just the stormwater pond and that's a 2019 slated project uh, for the construction of a, about a two acre pond on a parcel that the city owns down on Worthington Street uh, just west of uh, the uh, Imagination Station parking lot area and the uh, gentleman is correct that we have water issues in that area and so in 2021 as part of this overall project uh, and part of the resurfacing of Forest Street we're going to be adding larger pipes but we're also including Westover Street uh, which will go down to the intersection that he's referring to and we'll look to pick up the water from there also so um, we will be looking at that entire area in one way or another uh, address those couple of intersections that do have the flooding uh, in addition to what's coming down Forest Street. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mayor. Just a, just a few <coughs> real quick clarifications on your memo. Um, you say the water quality pond is is that only going to be three hundred grand, or is that six hundred? It's six hundred thousand. But it, so in your fourth paragraph, you talk about it uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollar limit for the grant is half of the project. The, the grant application allows you 50% of the project costs up to a maximum of 150,000. Okay. So we'll that be asking for the maximum of 150. And you said this is in our long-term financial plan. Um, do we have actually money set aside for this out of, okay. No, uh, as I'd mentioned in committee, uh, as part of that plan, we were looking at when we were looking out that far, uh, looking at approximately 1.1 of the 1.3 million as a borrowing and then roughly 285,000 was earmarked to come from this grant and then also uh, contribution from the Economic Watershed Protection Project because we are removing phosphorus and suspended solids from the water prior to it going directly into the Economic River. Okay. Thank you. Kevin? Um, <coughs> the uh, the 1.1, 1 .1, do we have an idea of what institutions you're going out to to, uh, to acquire these funds? I can address that. Um, when the city goes out for a borrowing, we will look at um, um, two different options, either going to market for the borrowing in which we do a competitive sale. We'll use a broker to help us um, obtain bids on that and then um, in, uh, interested um, uh, institutions can place their bid and then we can choose the most advantageous to the city. The second option is to look at a state trust fund loan um, and depending on how the rates are and where the market is, um, we'll take a look at that at that time and go the most advantageous route to the city. We don't go through local banks. Okay. This is market based. Okay. And there's, there's an interest associated with all of yeah, this. Yeah, but it's yes. very low. Um, we do need a motion and a second on this resolution. Move to approve. Second. And seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, uh, we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Alderman Rosick? Nay. Alderman Shaw? Aye. Alderman Ellis? Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Swart? Aye. Alderman Stray? Aye. Alderman Kavieski? Aye. Alderman Miller? Aye. Okay, moving on to old business. <coughs> First item is consider act on ordinance to amend the city of Oconomowoc comprehensive land use plan 2010-2030 for property located at 1101 South Silver Lake Street, the former YMCA site. This is the give the ordinance its second reading by title only. So, so moved. moved. Second. It's been seconded. It basically gave it its, its reading. Do you have any questions or concerns? <laughs> Seeing none, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Call the roll, please. Alderman Rosick. Aye. Alderman Shaw. Aye. Alderman Ellis. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Alderman Swart. Aye. Alderman Stray. Aye. Alderman Kavieski. Aye. Alderman Miller. Aye. Okay, <coughs> next is consider act on an ordinance to rezone lands residential m residential multi high district for property located at 1101 South Silver Lake Street, which is the Silver Lake Street senior housing. Uh, this is to give the ordinance its second reading by title only. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion and second on the floor. Call the roll. Alderman Rosick? Aye. Alderman Shaw? Aye. Alderman Ellis? Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Swart? Aye. Alderman Stray? Aye. Alderman Kavieski? Aye. Alderman Miller? Aye. Okay, next item is con <coughs> excuse me, consider act an ordinance to repeal and recreate section 17.808 of the Municipal Zoning Code 
relating to procedures and administrations of variances. This is for its second reading. So moved. Second. You have something to add, Jason? Thank you, Mayor. Common Council, you did recommend the ordinance that amended the variance section of the zoning ordinance. There was some discussion regarding specifically uh, subsection number nine. At that meeting, um, the at attorney, Eric Larson, was present. He said he would go back and look at that section. I believe Alderman Rosick had some concerns about the time constraints placed on it. Uh, we did ask him to look at it. He did supply some updated language, and we incorporated that into the code um, and that you have in your packets. Um, so it's shown in, in a, a red print, and it does give the Zoning Board of Appeals the flexibility of granting longer timelines. And then um, if they don't grant that, and it does take them longer, the zoning administrator uh, position may, may extend that um, up to six months. Um, on a case-by-case -case basis. Jason, <coughs> do we have to change this as amended then? Um, yeah, approve the uh, ordinance as it is before you. Okay, and which is the way it is now. Right. Okay, good. Awesome. Any comments or concerns? Seeing none, we have a motion second on the floor. Call the roll. Alderman Rosick. Aye. Alderman Shaw. Aye. Alderman Ellis. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Alderman Swartz. Aye. Alderman Stray. Aye. Alderman Kavieski. Aye. Alderman Miller. Aye. Okay, item D, consider act on conditional use permits for Fowler Lake Terrace Condominium located at 515 East Grove Street. We need a motion to approve the uh, conditional use permit. So moved. Second. Second. We're going to explain what we can and can't do? Sure. The, um, well, I think our attorney will help me on that a little bit, but the conditional use came with a positive recommendation from the plan commission. They acted on this back in December of 2017, so last December. It's been on hold. There was uh, first some concerns with the condominium plat that the applicants, that was a condition of the, of the conditional use permit moving forward. They had some uh, hurdles to get through with the, the plat. They got those lot lines worked out. They came before the council with the conditional use, as you recall at the last meeting. There was some concerns regarding um, item number 26, the payment of impact fees. Um, since then, uh, Eric Larson has done some uh, legal research with our code um, and basically f figures uh, the there's no building code that triggers the um, impact fee. So that that code is, is not valid. I'll let uh, Attorney Riffle maybe expand on that. Essentially, because you can charge an impact fee if there's a new impact. There is not a new impact. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. So, so you can't charge that. Okay. So we recommend approval. I recommend approval subject to a modification because we did not t take the liberty of removing number 26. I, we felt that must be a directive of the council. Um, so th any recommendation uh, staff could support um, an amendment to um, remove number 26 impact fee. Um, right. Alderman Shaw? Well, I, the question I have on that is that um, this doesn't create any, any kind of precedent for any future, you know, no, problems, no. Any, anything it is like what that. It is. I mean, if you have like two structures that are residents and you just simply change the ownership structure, it doesn't change whether or not there's a new impact to the city. They're both receiving the same services. They're not creating anything different. So that's basically the, you know, the nature of the opinion. The only thing we could do is. Redo the ordinance. Okay. At some point. If no, that's no, 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 no. Okay. It wouldn't change a thing. So I can't do that you either. You can only charge an impact fee when there is an impact. Okay. Um, so then we're looking to e eliminate 26. Yes. Right. Can Matt? You then my question, which is right with what Charlie's talking about, is paragraph 8 also had the sewage fee, this 3614. There's also the water impact fee. The memo and the council background doesn't address those things. Have you talked with the folks about the, the sewage charge and the water? Are they okay with that? Because it's still about four grand between those two. Right. S staff's understanding that those are different. Those are um, based on use. Uh, this impact fee is different. That's for, for an impact to the community. This is specifically for that specific property. Um, there's rules that have to be followed that, that talk about um, those costs being in. 
sewer availability charge. So can I make a motion to uh, remove the impact fee mm. on that? <coughs> number yeah, when we're number 26. Okay, so you're, you're making a motion to amend the conditional use permit to that remove is correct. item 26. I'll second that. Okay, now we're talking about the amendment. Any discussion? Pull that first. And then Seeing none, we have a motion and a second on the amendment. Call the roll, please. Alderman Rosick. Aye. Alderman Shaw. Aye. Alderman Ellis. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Alderman Zwart. Aye. Alderman Stray. Aye. Alderman Kavieski. Aye. Alderman Miller. Aye. Okay, now the ordinance or the uh, conditional use permit is amended. Any other comments, Matt? Did you have something else you wanted to add? Yeah, so are we leaving the sewage in? I mean, uh, yeah, that's more of a use fee than it is an impact fee. Do they, they, so the water one, I guess I don't have a problem with because they're, they're, they're gonna need a new meter install. Yes. Um, but is there something extra that has to go in for the sewage too that our guys have to actually do? The sewer and the water impact fees, the trigger for payment of those is the meter, the meter size. Where the city impact fees, like the park fee is um, building permit. So, so the, water, the, water the additional meter, meter on the property under our code would trigger the additional sewer and water impact fee. I, I understand the water, but how does that affect the, the sewer? The sewer is the same. same it's the it's the same meter. Building. Oh, I see. And okay. it applies right. to both services. I guess I should have known that, huh? You I've got one in my house. You probably never. Based on how much water you use. Well, I, yeah, I got that. Right there, no. I guess I, I don't have a problem with that. Then I, I just hope right. that I hope the folks that are here were told that that was going to be yeah, the case. Yeah, they knew about that. Okay, good. Yeah. Just a nod. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Cool. That's it. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor on the amended ordinance. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Alderman Rosick. Aye. Alderman Shaw. Aye. Alderman Ellis. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Alderman Swart. Aye. Alderman Stray. Aye. Alderman Kavieski. Aye. Alderman Miller. Aye. Okay, next item is Consider Act on Condominium Plot for Farlow Lake Terrace Condominium located at 515 East Grove Street. We need a motion to approve the condominium plat. So move. Second. This condominium plat actually divides uh, the, the, well, it, it creates a second tax key number and a separate ownership of the dwelling into two various units. Uh, this was a condition of the conditional use permit that they redo this. Uh, this will form unique ownership to each of the two different units in the, the, uh, in the structure. Uh, the plan commission did review this and they recommended it. Uh, this is a nice, uh, they, an updated survey was done. There was some glitches. They found some uh, previous mistakes were made and they, they have since corrected all those. Now the staff is very happy. We have a nice clean uh, plat of uh, survey. Um, showing the proper lot lines and the uh, dimensional coordinates. So okay. we recommend uh, so the, approval. The, the, the property, the lot, basically it gets split. Two separate owners the of the property. Two separate well. ownership will be shown at the Waukesha County. Two separate tax bills will be going out. Jeff? Yeah, just for the record on this, I did receive a call from uh, one of the property, adjacent property owners up there. And I know that um, from history that there has been issues with a couple of the neighbors up there and it has to do more with the placement of driveways, parking of vehicles, um, how close they come to the neighbor's fence and some of that. So it won't affect how I feel about this. I mean, I'm, I'm very much in favor of this. I'm just asking you to continue to be very, very cognizant of the fact that there is an issue there and uh, to continue to work with the adjacent property owners on it because it is a unique situation. I'll second that. I took a phone call as okay. well on that. So. <laughs> I won't go through it again. No. <laughs> Any other questions? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second on the floor for the condominium plat. Call the roll, please. Alderman Rosick. Aye. Alderman Shaw. Aye. Alderman Ellis. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Alderman Zwart. Aye. Alderman Stray. Aye. Alderman Kavieski. Aye. Alderman Miller. Aye. Okay, staff reports. Uh, Jason, you can come back up. Uh, Planning Department annual report update for 2017 and 2018. Good evening. 
Thanks for letting me take this opportunity to talk about what's been happening in the planning department. Uh, 2017 was another very exciting year. Um, I have so much to tell you um, that's been going on. Um, you know, I, I could talk about a lot of different things tonight. I could talk about the development applications that my department's reviewed. We, we approved 142 applications uh, in the year 2017, and I don't want to take the credit for it. We actually have a very good team, you know, in all the departments. A lot of people uh, get their hands involved in these applications, but, you know, we're very proud of, like, the Mills Fleet Farm and the... Um, the downtown projects going on and all this stuff happening in the, the northeast area of the city. So we could talk about that. We could talk about the subdivisions that are, that are going on. You know, we approved uh, six different subdivisions came before the city in 2017. Um, you know, these provide growth for the, the city. These are just three examples of, of, of uh, the city's subdivisions here. Uh, we could talk about all the zoning compliance that my department's done. We actually resolved 45 uh, various cases in 2017. Um, these are actual photos taken last year. You know, we have the chickens, uh, we have parking on grass and, and vision corners. I mean, it's, people were actually, um, you know, pulling up to the intersection and that's what they're trying to look through to see if cars are coming so these are all zoning code requirements listed in chapter 17 that we go out on a weekly basis put the the yellow vest on and and investigate uh, we could talk about all the the 2017 initiatives that we actually accomplished if you remember we did that housing study uh the, you saw that presentation in november 7th of last year giving the council an update on all the uh, current numbers where we're at we did the east wisconsin avenue ordinance for the corridor improving the the look and and feel of those buildings that will be constructed and we did a lot of website updates um you know we've done a lot more too i mean we did um text amendment for accessory buildings which was brought to me by one of the council members we did zoning map updates we've done uh, you know impediment analysis for affordable housing we, we did a whole bunch of initiatives last year we could talk tonight all about the 2018 initiatives the uh, the comprehensive plan the rfp is currently out for review by consultants right now um, southwood area attachment planning has been assigned with the clerk's department to you know champion that effort for an attachment of almost 40 acres coming into the city and um, the sign ordinance you know I'd like to take that on I mean we have a lot of other things too I want to look at the annexation process the subdivision ordinance the official map there's there's a lot of, to talk about but really you know all of this you know what don't you see you know you know this because you know, every February you get a copy of the department's annual report in your packet. I've been doing this for 12 years, um, and I list out everything. Plus, a lot of these applications that I've talked about come before you, you know, every twice a month I'm up here talking to you. So what don't you know? That's what's important. Well, this is a big slide, you know. I'm the first point of contact for all the developers that come to the city. I organize and run staff meetings twice a month. We issue all the temporary use permits for events that are on private property, not the ones in the street, not the runs, not the, not the moonlit movies, not, not anything in parks, but on private property like when Harley-Davidson wants to have some events. We assist businesses through the occupancy process. Every business that comes into a, an existing building, they start with, with me. Um, the, uh, we review most uh, signs that are out there, the permanent signs. Um, they have to comply with zoning requirements. We prepare um, all the plan commission agendas and all the staff reports that are inside those packets. We inform the applicants of the, the meetings, uh, such as this one tonight. Uh, we answer the phone on many topics. My phone rings constantly. Uh, we review and approve um, each single family home for zoning. Every home that comes into the city, I have a checklist that I gotta go through to check everything about that home. Setbacks, height, driveway setbacks, number of access points, etc. We create background and, and recommendations for architectural commission. We serve as the zoning board of appeals staff. We draft zoning ordinances, public hearing notices, and zoning determination letters. We get a lot of those from banks and mortgage companies and realtors. Uh, I just got one earlier tonight. Um, we create a list and maps for all the public hearing notices. The clerks rely on p 
planning to put these l address lists together so the proper people get noticed. We place those public hearing signs on the properties. If you've noticed, there's three of them out in Paps Farms right now. I put those out last week. We inspect and respond to all zoning complaints in the city, and we distribute plans that come in for review. I have to send these out to my review team. We put a, a comment letter together for technical review. So just wanted to share a little bit with you some of the daily activities that we do behind the scenes. Now, some of the fun stuff, you know, um, it's, it's nice to see that people actually do listen to us. Um, we work with applicants. Um, here was a building that came in, and on the left is what they kind of initially shot out there, and then we decided it really didn't meet the standards for Oconomowoc. Uh, we asked them to um, update it. Uh, we added that pitched roof, um, and we made it turn red, not the first time. First it was brown, but they ripped that off and put red back on. Uh, they added a tower element. They um, added the bracketing, the decorative lights. Um, so, it, it, you know, we feel it's really important to get that Oconomowoc look and not the cook cookie cutter type building. Um, here's an administrative change that many of you not are aware of. You know, these are happened behind the scenes. You know, the canopy uh, was suggested on the left, and we actually you know, looked at that and said that doesn't blend in with the rest of the building, so we actually had them wrap those in brick, add a base to match the rest of the building, and add a, a much thicker and more defined cornice on the top. Uh, so now these are the same style as their, their gas station in the nearby area. So those are some things that you might not see and be aware of. Um, this little area of the city, it's part of a planned development, and you know, th the developer was reluctant to, to put it in, um, and the planning department really pushed. I mean, there's letters that I wrote to them stating it had to go in, and, uh, you know, we had to um, tell them we really wanted this to go in. We worked hard uh, to get that in. We had to keep at it and be persistent to get that in, and it, I think it turned out very nice. Um, for zoning compliance, you know, here's an example. Um, you know, you always hear that we do zoning compliance. What does that mean? Well, here's a business that had some uh, heating exchange units and um, that were directing noise. We received a complaint from an adjacent neighbor, and uh, we worked with the applicant, and they actually ended up putting a fence up. Now the noise goes up instead of out. And um, now the neighbor's very happy. So you don't hear about this every day, but this is the kind of stuff that uh, we do behind the scenes. Um, we're also involved in the community um, a lot. I, I serve on the Silver Street Transportation Board of Directors. Um, I'm also the chair of the uh, Silver Street Fundraising Committee. We're doing quite well. We're getting a lot of money in. Um, I'm a high school speaker for several classes, including the civil engineering and architecture class. I've been doing that for years. Um, I also went and spoke just a couple months ago to the business economics class. I'm also a representative for the city, for the Waukesha County Planners Group. We meet a couple times a year and talk about various topics going on in, in the county. So um, with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. I just wanna say I look forward to another year providing a service to the city. Thank you. Thank you, Jason, excellent report. <coughs> Any comments? Yeah, I just wanted to thank Jason for all his help. Every time we get a packet, there's always some information that I have questions on and stuff, and you always have an open-door policy with, for all of us that I have seen, and want to thank you for that. Thank you for doing that. Um, <coughs> okay, thank you. Go ahead. I want to thank Jason, too, for all the work he does. I work with him quite a bit with Plan Commission, and I go in there, and he'll spend as much time as it takes to, to get the information to me, so I appreciate it. Yeah. Not asking everybody. And you have outstanding help, so make sure you pass our appreciation along. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Kevin? I also want to thank you, Jason. <coughs> uh, when I came to you that day, you just didn't tell me that something couldn't be done. You gave me some options, and uh, that was outstanding, and I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <coughs> Again, <coughs> echoing everybody's uh, comments, your, your department, along with all the others, but your department oh, yeah. uh, specifically tonight, um, has always taken the call, always responded, always been um, uh, very thorough in, in the information provided that 
not only to us, but to the community as well. And I appreciate that very much. Well done, Nate. Thanks, Jay. <coughs> Good, any other staff reports? No other <coughs> staff reports tonight. Okay. And <coughs> excuse me, moving on, uh, reports and comments from the mayor. I have three proclamations, so bear with me. Uh, first one, <coughs> whereas Wisconsin has the highest rate of underage drinking and current alcohol use among high school students in the United States, All right. and whereas adults provide alcohol to those below the legal drinking age are 21, of 21 are placing those youth at risk for health, safety, and legal problems, and whereas <coughs> alcohol use by young people is dangerous, not only because of the risk associated with acute impairment, but also because of the grave threat to their long-term development and well-being, and whereas it is illegal to give or allow your teen's friends to drink alcohol in your home, even with the parent's permission, and whereas anyone found guilty of purchasing or providing alcohol to any youth other than your offspring or legal ward is subject to both state and local sanctions in addition to any civil action that may occur as a result of damages or injury related to the offense, <clears throat> and whereas adults have the authority and responsibility to our youth to provide them with alternative opportunities by creating alcohol-free activities, and whereas Waukesha County Drug-Free Communities Coalition, through the parents who host Lose the Most, Don't Be a Party to Teenage Drinking campaign provides the educational materials to raise community awareness regarding this illegal and unhealthy practice. And whereas the City of Oconomowoc strongly encourages residents to refuse to purchase, provide, or pour alcoholic beverages to underage youth and to take the necessary steps to hold those who engage in this illegal and unhealthy practice to be responsible. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Oconomowoc not only discourages the use of alcohol by those below the legal age of consumption, but also exhorts all residents of Waukesha County to refuse to provide alcoholic beverages to those underage youth. <clears throat> and pledges to support the City of Oconomowoc Police Department efforts to identify and deter this illegal and unhealthy activity. Now, therefore, I, David Knoll, Mayor of the City of Oconomowoc, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2018 to be Parents Who Host Lose the Most, Don't Be a Party to Underage Drinking Month. That's the first proclamation. <clears throat> Second proclamation. Whereas in 1872, Jay Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of er, Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this heart holiday is called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska and Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperatures, clean the air, produce oxygen, oxygen and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are <coughs> a renewable resource given us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And trees are a source <coughs> of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas Oconomowoc <coughs> has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Foundation and desires to continue its tree planting ways. Now therefore, I, David Nold, Mayor of the City of Oconomowoc, do hereby proclaim April 27, 2018 as Arbor Day in the City of Oconomowoc and urge all citizens to support efforts to care for our trees and woodlands and support our city's community forestry program. Further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the hearts and promote well-being of present and future generations. <coughs> and the last proclamation, <coughs> excuse me, whereas our city is a community of compassion <coughs> and, and dedicated to being a wonderful place to live and raise a family, and whereas every family faces challenges that require faith, love, and hope, and whereas <coughs> Autism spectrum disorder is a disturbance of psychological development in which use of language, reaction to stimuli, interpretation of the, wor of the world, and the formation of relationships are not fully established and follow unusual patterns affecting the social, learning, and behavioral skills of those affected by it. And whereas autism affects one in every 150 children born today, over 1.5 million Americans today have, come, have some form of autism including some families of our own city. And where it is known that with proper education, training, and community living options, individuals with autism can lead distinguished, productive <coughs> lives in their communities and strive to reach their fullest potential. And whereas the annual cost of such disabilities grow to the billions of dollars and yet service options 
leg the needs of those impacted. And whereas our community supports increasing awareness of this challenging disability, research and services for those in need. And whereas a community, <clears throat> where, whereas we as a community seek compassion for those families facing this challenge. Now therefore I, David Knoll, Mayor of the City of Oconomowoc, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2018 as Autism Awareness Month in the City of Oconomowoc and urge all citizens to increase their knowledge and understanding of this disability Recommit to improving the lives of individuals and families impacted by autism and create a world free of discrimination where all can achieve their fullest potential. Those are my proclamations for today. Uh, other than that, I have no other comments except I hope everybody got a chance to go out and vote today and uh, we will await the results. Uh, reports and comments from Alderman. Tom. Two quick things. Whoopsie. Cut me off already. Um, Diane, could I get a copy of that proclamation on autism, please? Yes. And sign for it. And the second one, as far as the Arbor Day is concerned, um, I believe it's the Kiwanis Club. They sell trees like on May, uh, May 5th, I think it's like at Piggly Wiggly. First been, week in May, yeah. First week in May. It's been doing it for years and years and years. And, and I, you know, for $2 ceilings about this, this big, it's amazing how fast they go. And they got different other sizes, too. For So for that price, it's, uh, you know, if you're going to... Anybody yeah. got new, new loons? It's, it's great stuff. Any other comments? Go ahead, Lou. Kind of plays off of uh, your proclamation for um, alcohol. This month is also um, post prom or prom at the high school. We've volunteered over the last eight years uh, for post prom, which is uh, the ability to continue on uh, the prom activity in a drug and alcohol free environment that's hosted by the YMCA. Um, I'd encourage anybody that has, has kids or doesn't have kids uh, attending uh, the high school that uh, if you can volunteer your time to assist in, in that uh, it, it is received very well by the, the students and it does um, keep those, those kids safe um, in an environment uh, that plays to your proclamation. Right. So that was one of the reasons we did the proclamation this month because of prom. Any other comments? Seeing none, uh, that's the end of the meeting tonight. We need a motion to adjourn. So moved. I didn't move it. Someone else has yeah, to Mike move it. So move. Mike, Mike did? did? Okay, yeah. Mike yeah. did. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>